Good evening. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Bamidbar. We stood in unison and said Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazak. And now we dive into the world of Bamidbar. The Gemara refers to the Chumash Bamidbar as the Chumash Hapikudim, counting. Because of all five Chumashim, there is a counting in Vayigash in Bereshis. There's a counting in Shemos and Voera. Nothing in Vayikra. And then twice in Bamidbor. That this week said that there is a counting of all of the generations and the children. And then in Parashas Pinchas, we have it once again. Now the point that it's so central and so choshev and so choviv takodesh baruch Hu, who in a second knows the number and he doesn't have to do any counting, but to show his love, as the Chazal say, for his people. Um, when you have something, you always like to look at it. You like to count. Let someone has, let's say, a lot of money. They may be counting their money always. So. Um, it's called the Book of Numbers. In other words, the word, the word Bamidbor means desert. But we don't, in English, we don't call the book the desert. We call it numbers. That's the English word for Bamidbor. And we have two of the actual readings, um, the countings uh, in it. Now, I want to say that rarely do I go back, but there was one 60-second vort that I wanted to say last week that I thought was very important that we should fully appreciate something, which I'm just going to share with you. So I'm going to say a vort from last week, Sedra Bechukosai, I didn't have the time last week to complete and to say that for it, but I think that it's useful. The Rokeach, who was a Rishon, the Rokeach was a Rishon, lived around 500 to 600 years ago, and he said that if you look for at the beginning of the Sedra Bechukosai, Im Bechukosai Telechu, and you go seven, eight, nine psukim to the word Komemius, you will find that there is no Samach in any of the words or the psukim from Im Bechukosai, the very beginning, till the word Komemius. And the and he asked that and said that there are 60 letters in Birchas Koyanim. If you start with Yivarecha Cho Hashem V'Yishmerecha Yo'er Hashem Pana Vela Tol v'yosem l'cho shalom, and you count the letters, you will find there are 60 letters. And says, he continued, that that's why there's no samach in these psukim. Because all of these psukim from Imbechu Kosai are conditional. That means, im bechukosai, if you keep the Torah and the mitzvahs, then v'nasati gishmechem b'itam, v'nasati shalom ba'oretz. All the good things happen but, happen, but there is a condition. And the condition is bechukosai, to im bechukosai, if you keep the Torah, oh, it's going to be marvelous. If chas v'shalom you don't, it's not going to be so marvelous. But with Birchas Kohanim, whether or not the Tzibur are Bechukosai Telechu, the Brocha drenches every single Yid. 
if he's standing in the room in front of the Kohanim and they're benching, they're blessing the people, they are completely filled with the bracha and regardless of what they do or don't do, and there's no imbechukosai, there's no condition to it, like all the Torah and mitzvahs has that condition as it says, and that's why there's no samach because of those 60 letters of Birchus Kohanim, and we want you to know how important and how choshev and how special it is. Because it affects, filled with goodness and bracha, regardless of our station in life. Now once I'm mentioning Birchus Koyanim, because Rabbi Yehuda HaChosed, who lived 950 years ago, and I speak to you about him reasonably often, um, and he was from the Balitoises, his friends were all the Balitoises, and they said on him that he had the power to be Machaya Mesim. In one of his inyanim of his tzava, he says that you person should not shave or cut his hair, take a haircut on Rosh Chodesh. Now, and that, most of you are aware of that. But what do we do with this coming Friday, that's Rosh Chodesh Sivan? And right after Shabbos begins the Shloishis Yemei Hagbola. So we knew from Lagba Omer that since Lagba Omer came out Sunday, Lakovit Shabbos, we do a lot of things that we would not be allowed to do in the middle of the Omer, but because it's Erev Shabbos, and it becomes permissible on Lag Bomer or on these three days of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, leading into Shavuos. And normally we would be allowed to do it the Friday before, even though it's not Shloish Yeshimei Hagbola, because of COVID Shabbos. But this air of Shabbos is Rosh Chodesh. And Rabbi Yehuda Chosid was fire about shaving or taking a haircut on Erev Shabbos if it's the day before the Shloish Yemei HaGbola. Any Rosh Chodesh he was against. And, and there were many, many pages of a Sefer that no longer exists. There were 3,000 pages of his 53 Takonas why you couldn't do this or do that, different things that are listed there. Uh, like 50 pages explaining every Takona al pi kabola. Now, what I just said to you is not the halacha. It's al pi kabola. And as afraid of Rabbi Yehuda Chosad the world is, I can't tell you, don't take a haircut Friday, the covered Shabbos, which we would normally be allowed to do, because of the covenant of Shabbos. I can't tell you because the halacha is that if you really wanted to, you're allowed to. But I would recommend that we see many brachas and things happen for people, like many rebbes, when people would come to them and say, you know, we moved into a new house. And every week someone is falling down the stairs, tripping and falling. What do you think it is? You think it's the mezuzahs we put in? Do you think? So many rebbe's would answer from Rabbi Yehuda Chosid, who said if you do renovation in the house, you have to have at least a needle's width from inside the house to outside that the shadim, the mazikim, should be able to go out. And it's hard to understand because it's not meant to fully understand because it's al pi um, Or, or they, um, they were asked um, if there was any, anything in the house, you know, two brothers can't marry two sisters, uh, you can't shecht geese on, on, uh, in the month of Shvat, 
The different things which he set the pace for, and one of them was, as I said, not shaving and not taking haircuts on Rosh Chodesh. So many of Kla Yisrael simply don't. They would take it on Sunday or Monday, or on Monday not to embarrass Shabbos and come right after Shabbos and do it on Sunday, but they'll wait until Monday and then take the, the haircut. Now, the point being that, as, as, as I said, Rabbi Yudah Chosid, you have to tzarech be'inon. You need to think carefully before taking any of that on Rosh Chodesh. Now, I want to say to you that the Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky asked a question. We know that the Mishkan, after Moshe Rabbeinu came down after Yom Kippur, and Hashem said, Solachti Kidvarecha, that there was a tzivui to build the Mishkan. And as we know, that on the 15th day of Year, the Mishkan a year and 15 days after they left Mitzrayim, they left Mitzrayim on the 15th day of Nisan, and 15 days later, they, a year later, meaning on Rosh Chodesh year, plus 15 days, I mean, plus from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim to Rosh Chodesh was a year and 15 days and who come on Mishkan they began the actual servicing and everything that there was the Indian of the Mishkan actually there. Now we know from the Parsha that there were the Golem, that there were three Shvatim, three tribes on one side to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south. All twelve. Three, 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 and three. And the Rosh Hashiva asked, when they left Mitzrayim, they were millions of people. So how did they travel without a system? That only when the Mishkan was erected, they began to have the Degolim. And we know that each one of the Shvatim was placed in a place, Kenega the Merkava in Shemayim, the chariot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Merkava. And the four legs of the Merkava is Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and Rachel. And the place that they stood around the in the around the Mishkan was exactly the way the Shvatim were lined up and and in heaven existed around the Merkava. So the Rosh Hashiva said, "What did they do for that first year and fifteen days when they were traveling around? Was it just a behala of millions of people going in any way that they wanted to go?" So the Rosh Hashiva said. You can only have a system that's going to work when the centrality is Torah and mitzvahs. But when they left Mitzrayim, it took a year and 15 days till there was a Mishkan. So these Degolim and the Seder of how they traveled did not begin until the Mishkan was standing and was providing the pathway because Klal Yisrael is united when they're standing around the Mishkan. But if there's no Mishkan, you can travel, but the purposefulness is not as magnified or as dynamic as it is when you have purpose of unity and avoidance Hashem. 
And that, said the Rosh Hashiva, is why they waited to have the De Golem march in a certain format and not before that. Now, the Pasuk at the beginning of this Sedra says, Se'u es Rosh kol adas Yisrael. The word Se'u means to count. But the Mephoshim, even the Medrash asks, why was the word Se'u used? Why not limnos, lifko, different words that mean counting? And the Mephoshim explained because the word Se'u not only means count, but it means to lift up. Like you find by Yosef at Tzaddik, that when the two, the butler and the baker, were looked so sad, and Yosef said to them, Madua Penechem Roim Hayom, what do you look so depressed and dejected about? What do you look so depressed? And when he told them what each dream meant, he said to the butler who survived and was reinstated to his position of being a butler, ye saw Paro, that Paro will lift you up and put you back. But by the baker he said, ye saw Paro es Roshecha, that you're gonna be hung and you're going to be killed. You won't live through this ordeal. So we see that the word se'u, yisa, could be diametrically opposed from one end of the world to the other end of the world. Because in one sense it meant death, and in one sense it meant revival, return. And that's the message to each and every Yid. That every day of their lives, they are able to make it or break it. And the person who's involved in the community, or even the individual, the example I always give you, you can walk down the street, put on a smile and say good morning, good afternoon to somebody passing by and you made their day. You picked up their spirits and you were able to revive them and you were able to put them into a position of happiness just by your actions or your words to them. Now We know that the bolstering of someone's confidence is in a way a opportunity for every person. Because unfortunately so many people are overwhelmed by the actions of others. I mean, somebody could say something to them and they're broken and they're devastated and they won't see that person maybe for another year or if ever. But they allow comments and attitudes to, like the person who was, um, there were two people speaking at a chasnam at the corner of the room and somebody came in who was friendly with these two, but he had to walk from the door to the opposite end of the room to come over to say hello to them. And he sees they're talking, and as he's walking over, he's thinking, look how they're talking. Oh, I'm positive they're talking about me. The truth is they were not at all talking about the person. They were talking about something else. But some people have built-in 
fears that come to haunt them and it adds up to a big zero. They didn't have to lose themselves if they were in a good mood. They could have enjoyed the chasna and gone home happy and content. But because we unfortunately allow so many things to come our way and to mislead us, misguide us, misdirect us, that we ruin half of our days. We have a thousand things to be so thankful about each and every day. Yet the two problems that we have that are bothering us dominate our mind the entire day. And people who can stand up and rise above the occasion and be able to meet the challenge with fortitude are able to survive the day. Because the whole life is only made up of a compilation of days. Another day, another day from the time they're born till the time they're nifter. And, and surviving and meeting the challenge in a way that they should be able to have that fortitude and the ability to master themselves and their minds and allow themselves to be in a peaceful, comfortable mode throughout the day. And all those days add up to the thousand days and the 10,000 days of life. Now, we know that the numbers are given in this sedra of how big every shavit was. And the smallest of the shvatim was shavit levi. There were only 22,000 in shavit levi. Yehuda had over 70,000. Don had 66 or 68,000. That it was almost double or even double what Shevet Levi had. And it's really a Pella. The Ramban talks about it, and the Arachayim HaKadosh talks about it. I mean, they should have been by far the biggest Shevet because that they did not work. They were in Goshen. Their brethren, their brothers, the other Shvatim were all being beaten on and people were every day dropping dead in the middle of the fields as they were working because of the heat, because of the slavery, or because of the physical harm to them. Yet they ended up with a tremendous number, and Levi was the smallest shavit. So the Ramban says, that the people who were being beaten on, the Ka'asher Ya'anu Oso, Kain Yirbe Vachain Yifrods, that they multiplied, that they gave birth six at a time, Shisha Bekeris Echad, and that was because they were beaten on, they had a special brocha, because it says, Vachasher Ya'anu Oso. So if they had that, suffering, they ended up with the bracha and they had a lot of children. But Shevet Levi wasn't beaten on. So they didn't have that bracha, says the Ramban. So therefore they didn't have the bracha of multiplying the way they multiplied throughout. In the regular Machane Yisrael. But Levi had to, and don't forget, the Shivte Ko were counted from 20 to 60. Mi ben Eshim Shona Vamala. Shevet Levi was counted mi ben Choydesh Vamala. That means every Levi, when he was one month old, was turned into a position of counting, of counting. 
and he was in that 22,000. So there was, it was like unbelievable that it was so small. It should have been much, much bigger. But as the Ramban said, and I just said it to you, because they didn't have that bracha. Now, when they were counted, it was, but, but the Levium were not, were not counted specifically. We're told how many they were. But it, the Pasuk says that they were not counted. Because when a person is counted, it adds to the self-dignity and the respect of the person. That means when you go into a room, and if you count the 20 people, it's like an acknowledgement of each and every individual. In other words, you're not just one of 20, and we're only talking about the 20. You are one of the 20 that's making up the 20. So it picked up their spirits, their self-worth, and the dignity of their individuality, each and every person. Now, the Levium were not counted because they were leaders. And leaders don't have to have an additional chunk of ego. And that's what the Mephorshim say. That HaKadosh Baruch said, don't count the Levium because they're leaders and they're over Claude Yisrael and they do the Avoid and they this and that. So we don't have to pick up their spirits. They are thrust into the realm of, of spiritual gladness and happiness, and they don't need the addition. Klal Yisrael does need the uplifting of their self-dignity and their respect and everything that helps cement together the powerful power of independence, reliance, feeling good about yourself that each and every year has. But leaders ha don't have to be added, have added into their composition that structure of leadership which leads to additional boldness or brave, to be brave and all of the things that go into it. So Levi was only but this the Orachayim HaKadosh says what I just said to you because of their special status they didn't need the bolstering of their ego. Now, we know that Binyamin had 36,000 in his, roughly, the Torah gives you to the last person, but around 36,000. And Yehuda had, in the 70s, and Don had 68,000. Now, if I were to ask you, any of our listeners, who do you think is going to have a bigger shavit? Binyamin had 10 sons. Don had one son, and he was a, a disabled son. He was deaf. Chushim was his name. Chushim ben Don. So if I were to ask you, do you think Dunn is going to have a bigger shavit, or do you think Binyamin is going to have? Most people would have said, oh, I mean, Binyamin has 10 sons. He probably is going to have a much bigger shavit than, than Dunn, because Dunn has only one son. Yet he had double what Binyamin had. And the lesson to us is that we do not know what's going to happen. 
We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. With our minds, with our limited seichel, we would shots up, we would estimate, excuse me, we would estimate that this and this is going to be or not going to be based on what looks like the simple numbers and project from that what our human capacity and our human mind carries as we go through life. But what teaches us is Rabos Machshavos Belev Ish Va'atzas Hashem Hi Sokum that a person could think, could plan, could map out, uh, design, architecture, va'atzas Hashem hisokum. The Rabbana Shalom, we have disappointments and we have things that if we could see behind the curtain, we would understand why this is happening and why that's happening. But the thing is that when we live in Olam Hazed, we do not see behind the curtain. So things look to us like this, they look to us like that. We have questions in life, and it's only with a person's amuna. Rabbana Shalom, he is the one in the driver's seat. He is behind the curtain and outside in front of the curtain. And everything that he does and shapes and molds for us as a people, we cannot pre predict in a fashion as if that's what the fact is, because most of the time it's the exact opposite. Now, I want to say to you that the Pusik employs the word uh, and then it says the word the word Gilgul means skull so what it really means is that when we got done adding and we said this is the number according to every skull that's what the Pasuk means I'll be shot. But the Mekubalim all say that the reason that the word Gilgal is in the Pasuk and not just call Ish or call is because that most of us are Gilgulim. And Moshe Rabbeinu say this for him at the time when he counted them, he could look at them and see every Gilgal that person was going to be. That means some people, Tzaddik and Gemurim, don't come back as Gilgulim. But the average person comes back to fix this or fix that. We don't know why we're coming back to this world and what we have to fix. But there are some people, when they don't fix it in their lifetime, they come back a third time, a fourth time. And the Swarim say this, some people come back ten times to be able to fulfill what has to be done. Now, the Gemara says that there was a Koyen Godel, Rabbi Shmuel ben Alisha, who was, a, of course, a Kohen Godel, and he was a very big tzaddik. And it says that he had... He was a very good-looking man, very handsome, the Gemara says. And he had a daughter and a son. And when the Chorban took place, the son was grabbed and sold as a slave, and the daughter was taken. She was exceedingly pretty, and the son was, like the father, very, very handsome. So one slave owner bought the boy, the Gemara says, and one slave owner bought the girl. And one day, these two slave owners were together in the marketplace. 
And one said to the other, you know, I have a slave that I bought, the most handsome looking boy in the world. And the other one answered and said, and I bought a girl that is the prettiest people stop to She's very, very pretty. So the two of them, the Gemara says, you know, why don't we have them live together and they're going to have gorgeous children and the price for them is going to be much better. We'll make a lot of money. So the Gemara says they took the boy and they took the girl and it was pitch dark, black outside. So no one saw who they were. They themselves didn't know who they were in the room with. And their owners told them you're to be intimate. And that's why you're going to be in one room, the boy and the girl. So the boy came in and went it up to the corner and the girl went to the opposite corner. And while they were there and they, it, they realized why they were put into one room, so the Gemara says that the boy started to cry and the girl started to cry. And the boy said, I am the son of Rabbi Yishmael ben Alisha Kohen Gogol I'm going to do this now? And the girl started to cry and said the same thing. But she was whispering. They didn't hear each other. But in the more, and they did not, they were oimed bin Nisoyen. And they did not fall in. And when the sun started to come, and they had some light and they saw each other, they realized they were brother and sister, that the Rabbana and they died. They cried so bitterly of the test that they were about to have and they withstood it from happiness. They cried, they were crying the whole night, how could I do this? But now they were crying from Simcha and from the crying non-stop, the Gemara says they died on the spot before they went back to the houses of where they were sold to be slaves. Says the Arizal that we know there's a famous story of Tamar in Tanakh and she had a brother and they liked each other and they made a husband that some Chacham agreed that they were really not brother and sister, that they were only both from Dovra Melech, but there was a problem with the Kedushin. It's a whole drusha. That they were really not brother and sister and they lived together. But when they came up to Shemayim, there was a big taina to them. Many other Chacham held you were brother and sister. So they were, says the Arizal, they were nisgalgal to this brother and sister, the children of Rabbi Yishmael ben Alisha, the Koyen Godel. And and that's why after they were oimed bin Nisoyen of having been in one bedroom a whole night and didn't know who they were, but they didn't listen to their masters and they did not have any intimacy. And because of that, they were masakin the pagam of when they lived earlier as David HaMelech's children. So we have to know that life is tough. And we do have encounters with the Yetzirah each and every day, each and every day of our lives. But the happy and lucky is the person who is Oymed bin Nisoyen, he fixes up 
not everything of the, not only everything of the past, but he fixes up his life then and assures that there's no more Gilgulim. We're before Mashiach anyway, so the rote of Gilgulim will be over. And let's hope that we all stand up by Trias HaMesim, or let's hope that there's no death from now till Mashiach comes. So we don't have to worry about Trias HaMesim, uh, and that there is that Shlemus in our lives, like this brother and daughter, brother and sister of Rabbi Shmuel ben Alisha. Now, I want to say to you that the Pasik says, um, with you should be ish ish lamata, each and every person lamata, ish lerosh veis avos of who. That the Pasik ends up, it goes from like a plural almost, like ish v'ish. We're talking about communal. We're talking about the totality of Klal Yisrael. But the Pasuk ends up, ish l'rosh v'esavosav hu. So the Mepharshim say that Every yid in his life, when he builds his house or he goes out and becomes a leader, becomes a rebbe or becomes influential, has a double role. He is never allowed to say, listen, I'm part of a community. They have problems. Let them solve. It's a whole community. Let them go solve all the headaches. But the fact, and then there's others who say, I'm part of a community and I have a communal responsibility and I can't ignore what's going on. And that's the ish, ish. And that is because ish, don't forget, is more than Adam or more than Anoshim. Because the level when there's the word ish is a higher level. And it is something that could be carried over in the dynamics of Klal Yisrael. Now, I want to say to you a word uh, about Shavuos. Because there are only two days in the year that we have one day Yom Tiv, Diaraisa. That means Pesach is Diaraisa, but there's seven days Diaraisa. The eighth day is Durabanan. Sukkot has also a group of days that are Diaraisa, but it's more than one day. Yom Kippur and Shavuos Minatora have the status, it's full Diaraisa. And it's only one. The Chassam Sofer says that the second day of Shavuos the second day of Shavuos is almost the Arisa. It's not. It's a Durabon and an Eretzel. It's only one day. But because every other time we have two, it's a Sveika de Yoima that they weren't sure when Rosh Chodesh was, so it was either this day or the next. So Misveka de Yoma, they used to keep two days in the beginning of Pesach, two days at the end of Pesach, and that's how the world existed. Rosh Hashanah, of course, has nothing to do with Sveka de Yoma. As I said to you before Rosh Hashanah, it's two distinct separate days, and the Arizal says that the whole first day of Rosh Hashanah a person should daven for his ruchnias, and the second day is for his gashmias, keneged leah and rachel. 
It's too distinct, but it's Yom Richta and has equal status. But the first two days of Pesach or the first two days of Sukkot do not have equal status. Um, and and uh, say the Mekubolim, that there's no Cholamoid for Shavuos. I mean, it's one of the Shalosh Regolim, and Pesach and Sukkot have Cholamoid, so why doesn't that? And they answer and say, because Shavuos is so high, it has no room for any Chulan, any Chol, Chol Hamoid. That it's too high to have mixed in it anything of Chulan, of Chol. So Shavuos in and of itself is one day because Yom Kippur is Yoival. 50, like the Shlach Kodesh writes, that he asks his Talmidim, which is bigger, uh, Yom Kippur or Shabbos, and they all said Shabbos because there's seven aliyahs, and the punishment for someone that's Machal Shabbos is worse than the punishment for Yom Kippur, and the Shlach Kodesh said to them, no, you're wrong. Shabbos is Shemitah. <coughs> And much higher than the Shemitah is Yoival. And the reason that the punishment is less than Shabbos is because the day is Kula Chesed, a day of Slicha, Mechila, and Kapara. So even the punishment is sweetened. And it's a less of a punishment of Chas Shalom. Somebody was Mechal Yom Kippur. But it, so, and Yoival is Chamishim, 50. And Shavuos is the 50th day. And those are both Lamalim and Ateva, Yoival, 50. It's above and beyond, and that's why it's only one day. Because the power of the day is so concentrated that it doesn't ripple effect and divide up into more days in the actual um, sequence of the days and the time that we have um, our uh, yumtiv involved. We do have still uh, the days of Miluim, that if somebody didn't eat the Korban Chagiga or Korban the Shalmei Simcha on yumtiv as they were supposed to, they always had miluim, days afterwards that you could eat the, that korban chagiga or shalmei simcha afterwards. And that's why it goes from Vav is the first day of Shavuos into Zion, the second, up through the twelfth day of Sivan. So there is a uniqueness. And as the Arizal said by Hamisha Osir Bishvat, that we come out of Teves and half of Shvat, which is Din. But with, Chami, with Hamisha Osir Bishvat, we are able to afford ourselves the luxury and the hashpa of Pur. Purim and Odor, Pesach and Nisan, Pesach Sheni in Iyar, and Shavuos in Sivan. Then we come back to Tammuz, it's Din the whole month, that's how we had the Egel and the Chor Besamigdash. It's from Rosh Chodesh Tammuz until Chamisha Osir Be'ov. And then we go back into the world of Chesed, and we have Elul, and then we have Rosh Hashanah, then we have Aser Simei Tshuva, then we have Yom Kippur, then we have the four big days, Keneged the Yudke, Vovke of the Shem Avaya, between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, and then the beautiful Yom Tev of Chag Hasukos. So I want to say that I will be Bezaz Hashem, 
making a video either Sunday or Monday of the coming week, which is the Shlosh Shemei Agbala. I will discuss some of Shavuos, and I will then do also Parshas Noso, which is the immediate Shabbos right after Shavuos. Shavuos ends Thursday night, and Friday is in between to be able to prepare for Shabbos, and we then have Shabbos Kodesh, which is Parshas Noso. And the last thing I wanted to say to you is that this Friday is Rosh Chodesh. And then we go straight into Shabbos. Now each Rosh Chodesh and Shabbos have tremendous bracha embodied. It's characteristic, it's ingredients, a tremendous bracha. And the Sfarim say that when we go from Rosh Chodesh, because we all start off at a certain point, and we go up, up, up. But what happens if Rosh Chodesh is first? And then when you get to the 50th or the 100th Madrega in Rosh Chodesh, you then go into Shabbos. Which means you don't start at the starting point of Shabbos. You're starting already on the 100th level because you're coming from Rosh Chodesh straight into Shabbos. So I want to wish each and every one of you a guten Chodesh haba aleinu letoiva and that the Shabbos should be with very delicate, special quality in your divrei Torah at the Shabbos table with your seudos that you have, should be Oneg Shabbos in the fullest sense, Kibbutz Shabbos, and make the hours and minutes, <coughs> excuse me, of Shabbos higher and better than ever before. <laughs>